Hi guys, I'm Walt. I'm talking about comics. Thank you very much for tuning in. And um, I will start with a little bit of housekeeping. Um, I was thinking about doing a special video on this, but why bother? Um, just want to thank you, all of you uh, out there who are tuning in regularly. Uh, I just passed my 1000th subscriber and um, I'm not necessarily proud about it or whatever. I'm just surprised <laughs> that that so many people are, are watching those those weird uh, review videos but it's cool if you like it I enjoy doing them and um, you wouldn't know by watching those videos but um, I'm really um, a very film oriented person I'm a filmmaker a director and a, and a screenwriter um, who didn't want to invest too much time in the filmmaking aspect of those uh, little thingies that I'm uh, uploading on YouTube. But now I'm thinking about, you know, elevating the format a little bit um, without investing too much time into it. Because I know if it becomes this thing, which is very time costly, um, I will stop doing the videos or I, I just won't have the time to do them anymore. So um, yeah, I'm looking for a compromise there. Um, anyways, expect the the whole thing to to look a little bit better in the future and to maybe also to sound better um, but before this will happen um, I will talk about comics like I always do and uh, today it's DC only <laughs> um, it's not because I only got DC comics uh, this week um, I got three other ones uh, so this is my DC stack for two weeks and I got three additional uh, comics that I still haven't read. Um, so you can see I became somehow a DC fanboy in the past few months. And it has a lot to do with, um, with the buying habits that I have regarding single issues. And um, yeah, those are very much DC focused because of DC Rebirth right now. Um, I'm enjoying DC Rebirth um, a hell of a lot. And um, I think DC is doing such a good job um, especially the management regarding their line and the, the, the diversification of the line they have uh, superheroes they have they, they still have vertigo well the new vertigo is now young animal um, they have uh, the Hanna Barbera line they have now the white storm by uh, Warren Ellis um, and they're still increasing all those little boutique imprints um, which is fantastic um, and um, most of the stuff that I get in single issues is superhero oriented because I just enjoy the the fun element of having like this you know this floppy in my hand and it makes me feel like a 12 year old again uh, I'm still buying of course uh, collected editions and graphic novels and everything which are not superhero and not even DC focused um, and probably I don't talk about uh, enough about those um, I read a few European uh, graphic novels recently, which I really enjoyed. But um, yeah, without further ado, let's let's kick this off with uh, the White Storm. This is uh, a new number one by uh, written by Warren Ellis, drawn by John Davis Hunt, uh, who is one of my new favorite artists. Look at this beautiful cover. Uh, this is perfect already, and. Um, well, what's there to say about it? Um, if you know the old um, Wildstorm titles, um, if you know all the characters, um, this is a treat for you because you can see them reimagined through Warren Ellis's um, contemporary eyes and ideas. Um, you know, his biggest quality, Warren Ellis' biggest quality, is probably to just put very complex ideas. Uh, that he's reading about into, let's say, almost um, primitive um, um, storylines. You know, the, the storylines are not, not always very complex. They are basically um, very noir-influenced, um, quite action-oriented, actually. Um, but the ideas behind the plot are often very complex and very intelligent and... Um, so if you're into, if you're this curious person who wants to find out about um, 
recent developments in technology, biology, and so on, you need to read Warren Ellis comics. Um, regarding the story, um, well, let me first say that I love uh, John Davis Hunt's art. Um, I hope you can see something. In, he was working with Gail Simone on um, Clean Room, which uh, I very much enjoyed. The first uh, trade paperback, I just finished it a few weeks ago and I was very impressed by it. And he brings those sensibilities of body language, um, of facial expressions, you know, all those little... Um, and you look at this here, this is a perfect example. Um, the, the range of emotional expression in his um, very minimalist and, and elegant drawings are fantastic. He reminds me a little bit of, um, uh, what's his name, McKelvey, uh, or McKelvey, um, the guy on Wicked and Divine, in, in that he's, um, yeah, the, the, there is a slickness to, to his artwork, which I really enjoy. Well, let's get back to the story. The story is about, I would say, two organizations. There is a company which, um, or a conglomerate, which is evil and there is um, a secret government uh, operation unit which is also quite dubious and they fight each other it's about power it's about um, covert operations it's about secret governments it's um, it's everything that makes a lot of sense nowadays in today's political climate and um, I really enjoyed the first issue it was it was a nice read uh, so I have to uh, uh, I have to say Warren Ellis is never very strong in the first one or two or three issues. It becomes um, more intense as it, uh, as it um, advances because um, he needs a lot of time um, for the introduction of his ideas, the characters, everything. So the story, finding out what the story is, is part of the fun in Warren Ellis comics. And um, I'm in for the ride. It's a limited 24 issue run. Um, and I think, if I understood it correctly, this will be divided in a six-issue uh, series, uh, mini-series. The Wild Storm is the, f is the first one, and uh, I urge you to check it out. It's really good. All right, so I enjoyed DC Rebirth so much that I um, thought about just sampling some of the series that I haven't, um, haven't read yet, haven't checked out yet. And um, some of them, like Suicide Squad, um, I would say rightly so, not because it's bad, but because it's just not my my taste, my, my kind of comic. Um, I enjoyed it, it was fun to read it. Um, I don't know much about the characters, I read some of Ostrander's run, because I love, loved Ostrander's Spectre, but even the old legendary one I couldn't really get into. Uh, but you know me, I'm um, always sampling stuff and if I'm not hooked, uh, I have so much to read that I I will probably just jump to the next one. Uh, the art here is great by John Romita GR. Um, not everyone likes him. I don't know why. It's like this Bendis phenomen phenomenon where, where people who are like well established and, and doing a fine job um, are not beloved anymore just because they're they, they become a commodity. Someone who's oh, always there and um, you, you lose respect for, for them, but they're really great craftsmen. Um, and, and this is also a great coloring job here. Uh, there are some bits by Eddie Barrows in the back, uh, which I enjoyed very much too. Um, Eddie Barrows is uh, the artist on um, Detective Comics. And um, I have to say, um, I'm, I'm reading now a lot of DC and um, I feel that they really have um, rebranded their house style, their, their artists um, have some similarities. There's a lot of black used, um, there is this very realistic approach to, um, to bodies and to facial expressions. So if you compare it to Marvel, which right now is very much um, more playful, more cartoony, uh, DC is, is going for a more realist um, take and I enjoy this much more, I have to say. I always did. I know I'm, I'm probably a little bit old school regarding that. Um, 
Back to Suicide Squad, was it okay? Yes, it was, but I don't need to read this on a regular basis. All right, next up, uh, Batwoman Rebirth. This is um, basically a trailer for uh, the, the comic series. It's, it's really, uh, I'm laughing because a trailer is the perfect description for, for this issue. And I think we need more of those. I think this is a great idea um, and, and they finally found a hook to this uh, one-shot rebirth um, issues with this one. Um, maybe it happened before, but I wasn't aware of it in that it's, it could be like a cheap introduction uh, um, in literature you say a pre preface I think um, so something a prologue um, where you just give a rough sketch about the character and what's to be in, what's to um, expect of the story and uh, the whole feeling of the whole uh, of the thing that that we're expecting to um, to read in detail so basically a trailer um, which teases you for the upcoming series and and i don't think it should be the number one because the number one has to be already establishing all the conflict the, the, you know everything has to be like to grab you by the throat and, and 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 move you into the story already this has only to tease you and it does so very well um it's written by um marguerite benet tiny in the fourth uh drawings by steve apting so it's a an all-star team um, and I'm really I'm really blown away by the fact that DC right now um, man so much uh, so many ads it's hard to find a page to show you a double page uh, <clears throat> so they're they're assembling fantastic creators right now and um, you know I really love the artwork in here again um, you know Steve Apting is one of the fathers modern fathers of this style that i just described have heavy ink and uh, realistic bodies and um you know uh, a noir feel about everything um and i thought this was super successful in uh, you know teasing us for what's to come it's not so much a story per se in here so if you expect to read a batwoman story this is no story. It's just nice pictures, atmosphere, and um, something in the back which I also really liked, where they do this uh, coming soon in the pages of Batwoman. So if the first thing was the the trailer, afterwards we get another teaser for what's to come um, in the future. Um, yeah, it was really nice. I enjoyed it. I got a better gasp of the character, which I'm not super familiar with. And uh, I think it's a great introduction if you want to check out the ongoing. Next up, Hell Jordan and um, the Green Lantern Cops. I'm sorry. So, um, yeah, of course, if I check out new series, I'm looking for uh, new entry points. And um, here they also did... I'm not a big fan of the Rebirth um, design here. But I have to say it's a very... Um, the, the fact that they, they are putting the, the story chapters on the cover very visibly and at, uh, at every cover at, in the same spot, it, it helps me uh, as a reader to see where is a part one of, uh, of a new storyline. And um, so this is why I grabbed this one. Um, I'm, not, um, I'm not versed in the Green Lantern myth and I'm not super interested in it. I'm not a very cosmic guy um, and um, yeah I it was fun reading it um, I enjoyed it again the art really good uh, the high standards regarding the art and DC uh, comics nowadays is um, really impressive I have to say and again it's a very similar style to to the other books it's it's quite dark it's heavy um, and um, yeah, well, the story, I didn't completely understand everything. Um, of course, it's a new entry point, but only for people who know what they're, um, what they're gonna read and what to expect and who know all the characters. Um, 
I do know uh, the White Lantern, Kyle Rayner, um, from the Omega Man um, book by Tom King. Of course, um, Hal Jordan, I, I know of him. Um, I read some of Jeff Jones' um, Green Lantern, but it didn't really grab me. So uh, I was a bit lost here. What is happening? A lot of lanterns are talking with each other, are trying to, um, to find um, a solution to a problem that I'm not completely aware of. Um, but uh, it looks nice. And um, yeah, it's, it's for the fans. I think it's for the fans. It's a nice book, but not necessarily for uh, people coming on board. Um, I would say the, the opposite about the next book, which is Red Hood and the Outlaws. Uh, this is the first time that I'm reading this and um, it was a fantastic issue. Uh, without knowing the characters very well, um, I mean, of course, Bizarro. I don't know if it's the Bizarro or if it's a new one, um, but Bizarro as a concept, um, I know and enjoyed in the past. Um, we have um, uh, Jason Todd, I think, is, um, is Red Hood, right? You, you see, I'm not, I'm not a DC fanboy at all. Uh, anyways, this is a Trinity book. So we have a, a Batman stand-in, a Wonder Woman stand-in, and a Superman stand-in. And um, the, um, the guy who's leading the pack is uh, this uh, former Robin, um, Jason Todd. And, um, well, the art was a bit underwhelming, I have to say. Um, and I read um, that this is not the regular artist, so we can expect even better stuff from for um, future issues. It's a moral question. This is the story. Uh, the moral question is, um, you know, you can see it on the cover. Um, Jason Todd has to decide if Bizarro... Um, can be allowed to be alive because he's such a dangerous person uh, with the mind of a three-year-old. Uh, it's basically a Hulk, Frankenstein character, um, but with even more powers, the powers of Superman, like almost limitless powers. And um, of course, it's a hard decision to make. I mean, he's, he's innocent in the way that this is how he is. It's not his fault. Um, but the consequences of his actions can be really, really, really big. So um, how do you deal with that? Um, do you become his guardian angel uh, standing by his side all the time and, and trying to make everything work? Or do you just resolve it like this? Um, and it's a, it's, a, it's a nice story. It's an emotional one. I really enjoyed the rhythm of it and... Um, yeah, Scott Lobdell. I'm, I was really surprised. This is the guy who ruined my X-Men when I was younger. And now he's a really good writer. So I'm on board for future issues of this. Next up, um, Justice League of America Rebirth. Um, this is a comic. Uh, they say it's written by Steve Orlando. But I know that it's uh, written by an algorithm assembling the typical ingredients of a... Uh, um, first issue where a team is being assembled. So you just push the button um, and the script comes out. You just um, type in the names of the heroes and then the script comes out. It's a really, really good application. And they, um, yeah, they made it work in this comic. So, um, yeah, Batman is assembling a, a few characters. Um, uh, the lines used to assemble them and the dialogues are also prefabricated. Fabricated. They're the most cliche possible. And um, uh, yeah, if you're into this, um, into these characters, um, you're probably more invested than I am. For me, this was uh, a super, super average um, one shot, which um, doesn't help at all selling me on the series. Um, yes, Lobo is in it. He's a little, he's kind of fun. Let's, let's put it like that. But man, this was so average. Um, I'm sorry to say that. Uh, this was really, really bad. And I will be back for number one because I pre-ordered it. But I'm kind of um, thinking about asking my local comic shop dealer to keep it 
for other interested readers. Okay, let's come to um, another good one. This is my probably one of my favorite series right now, New Superman, um, which is written by uh, Jin Yuang. Um, man, why don't they put the... You know, there used to be a, um, a thing where on the first page you get all the information about the creators. This has changed. I don't know why um, they put it in the back. Because I'm always forgetting names and stuff. So Jin Luen Yang is the writer. Billy Tan on the pencils and um, Getsen. Getsen on colors. It's just one name, Getsen. And this was another fun issue. So this is another Trinity comic um, with a Superman stand-in, a Batman stand-in and a Wonder Woman stand-in. Um, but this is so complex and dense and simple at the same time it's it's really um this has started as a fun series nobody was really everyone was a, like, like, a little bit bugged by it. do we need a chinese superman really a new superman from china fabricated by some secret government um agency who makes um who produces superheroes uh, this was kind of corny but I have to say, this grew into, yeah, like I said, one of my favorite um, ongoings right now. And um, here we have, it's a coming of age book. It's young people coming to terms with, um, with their environment and the expectations um, the world has towards them. And um, so we have um, um, New Superman. Uh, I always forget his, um, his name. What's his name again? Um, well, is it important to know? No, it's not. Um, so he's training with a master of, uh, of Kung Fu or whatever and uh, has to learn something about his abilities, how to use them. Um, in a, um, a parallel montage, we see the uh, same thing with um, the Batman of the book um, who fights for the role of Batman. So there, there, is, uh, there, there are a lot of young men in training to become the Batman of China and our hero here, um, Moixi, he has a funny name, I didn't know that this was a, it's probably a Chinese name that I'm not aware about, Maxi or Moxi. And um, this guy you can see here, he's a bit overweight, he's not like, you know, the prototypical superhero type of guy, but he's super intelligent and super witty and this is how he overcomes here his, um, his nemesis. Um, and everyone, and there is the one, the woman girl, he, she wasn't very much featured yet, but it will happen, I think, in future arcs. Um, but what this is really about is, um, like I said, um, young people um, dealing with family issues um, all the time um, and starting to become, you know, the heroes that they want to be. And look at the art it's really cool every issue is uh, full of story it's a real you know treat to to read an issue of this so it's it's a big arc of course but you always get a full story out of every issue and i can only urge you this is number eight you can just start with this one it's a nice introduction uh, or grab the one before that number seven i think it was a, a one shot um yeah, it's one of DC's best books and there's a nice reveal at the last page. I won't show it to you, but it's a fun reveal. Um, I think they want to, now that they introduced those Chinese superheroes, want to pull them a little bit more towards the DC universe uh, from the Western Hemisphere. Um, another very solid book um, is Aquaman. Aquaman. Um, I talked a lot about Aquaman. I want uh, go into details with this issue. It's another nice, fun read uh, by Dan Epnet. Um, I'm still not sold on the art by Scott Eaton. Um, you know, it's just not super pretty, but <laughs> um, whatever, it does its job and um, I'm still on board. Aquaman is really a nice read every time it comes out. Earth to Society, um, this was the story would have would have filled like 
two normal pages in New Superman, or three, let's say. Um, and here, Dan Abnett, um, through the use of full page um, pencils, uh, this is quite. <laughs> you can see it here. I mean, do we really need this uh, on a full page, which is basically a non information? And um, so you can see this wasn't like the. Neither the. Um, the author nor the artist have put a lot of uh, effort and thought into this one here. It feels like it needs to go on for a little bit longer, the, the whole series. Um, um, this was not a necessary chapter, but in general I like the series, I like the characters. Um, and I mainly enjoy Dan Abnett's writing, this is why. This is still okay. Um, next up my other favorite DC series, um, um, aside from New Superman, uh, Batman Detective Comics, um, not, uh, 950, and this is uh, for four dollars. You get, I think, 36 or 38 pages of story. Marvel, check this out. It's possible. You can do a lot of story, and not just a story, just a throwaway thing. Beautifully illustrated. Um, and gre great writing by Tynion the Fourth. Um, I can only repeat myself. This is the new Chris Claremont. So where in the world would you get another author uh, who is like just as wordy, uh, just as flowery in his descriptions, and have superheroes being fans of ballet? This is so Claremonty, and I love it. Um, so yeah, you have to have a soft spot for this very soft, <laughs> um, a soft spot for soft stuff. Um, so if you like um, your superhero comics a little bit on the poetic, maybe a little bit kitschy and uh, psychological side of things, this is something for you. But really, if you haven't checked out Detective, this is DC's best book. It's not just me saying this, uh, look at the reviews. Look at other people um, talking about it. This is a fantastic team book. And um, I love how um, in this one um, there are three stories uh, uh, focused on three different characters from the uh, detective cast. Um, so there is this one here, uh, Orphan, um, who's this girl who's into ballet. And she's very, she's like, a, how do you say this? Um, she's locked into herself. She can't really communicate with people. Um, so she's really focused on, 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 on the bodies, not, not only of the body of herself and how, how she moves and how she, how she expresses herself, but also the others. So this is what she sees when she communicates with others. She only sees body language. And um, I thought it was a very, you know, it was a very thoughtful way to approach a character and not this typical plot point shit where yes my father was killed so this is why I'm like this no this is a more subtle thing where you really go into um, what makes um, a character stand out from the others again a thing that Chris Claremont could do so well back in the day so um, yeah you can see it's super wordy but um, um, I enjoy it. I enjoy the writing very much. I love the artwork, which is not by the regular um, regular art team. Or there is, oh wait, there is one of the stories um, is by the regular one, the last one featuring uh, Batman. Um, so yeah, the second one is focused on uh, uh, on Az um, Azrael and um, how this, um, um, what's it called in English? Oh man, I'm still looking for it. So for people who don't know me, I am from Germany. I, I, I'm doing this also to, to practice my, uh, my English and sometimes I'm missing words. So, um, well, let, let, me, let me shorten this uh, whole thing and, and just say, uh, this is a great issue. This is a fantastic introduction to the book. Uh, for four dollars, you get a lot of story. Um, and um, if you don't buy this, 
um, and you like superhero stuff and you used to love the X-Men, um, then you're doing something wrong. It's really good. All right, approaching the end. Don't worry. Uh, Deathstroke number 12. It's Twilight part one. So um, I'd say it's not super easy probably now to get on board uh, with Deathstroke um, because um, it's unfolding itself. It's, uh, it has started in a very, um, you know, the author didn't help the reader very much with information, which I normally like, by, but here I was a little bit lost from time to time. But now all the little pieces of the puzzle are being assembled and um, we have this uh, big cast of characters um, um, with, of course, Wade Wilson, that stroke um, in its middle. No, wait, wait, have I said Wade Wilson? What's his name again? Isn't Wade Wilson Deadpool? Uh, I'm a little bit confused right now. Slade. Sorry. Um, but yes, there is this confusion. <laughs> it's uh, quite uh, intended because, uh, I don't know if you know this, uh, uh, Deadpool was a ripoff of, um, of Deathstroke. So, um, yeah, this is a very... Um, political and amoral book, amoral book. So if you're um, if you're not um, into you know a more mature take on superheroes, uh, if you expect a lot of action and um, just plain fun, this is not for you. It's a very dark and sarcastic and cynical book, but I really really like it. And uh, this was uh, another great issue with this. Uh, he really looks like Black uh, Panther, doesn't he? This is such a Black Panther ripoff. But um, yeah, it's it's fun, and you know why a priest is putting it uh, in there. Um, yeah, it's really good. It's written by priest, so it has to be good. Uh, check it out and trade. I would recommend. And lastly, I will talk about Future Quest Volume One. Those are the. This is like another boutique imprint uh, that DC has right now. Hanna Barbera um, uh, is this um, cast of characters we know from uh, the cartoons of our youth, or we don't. Um, I don't know a lot of those characters, but it, it's just a fun adventure story written by Jeff Parker and drawn by Evan Shaner and Steve Root. And um, I have to say, um, the fact that Steve Root is drawing this was a big draw for me. This looks more like Evan Shaner here, um, but they have somehow a similar style um, very classical um, and very beautiful um, drawings here if you like Mike Allred for example um, I think Mike Allred is a big Steve Root fan and you can see uh, you know look at the heavy line work here and stuff like that so it looks it's like a throwback um, to um, to the '60s, but with modern, with a more modern storytelling, of course. Um, and it's just a plain fun adventure book. Uh, and this is something where Jeff Parker really excels at. I ha I just read the first two issues, uh, so I can't really talk about the whole uh, trade, but I I really enjoyed them. It's. Um, basically an alien invasion story and um, yeah I will tell you more about it when I have finished it that's it wow this was quite long for um, the small amount of books I was talking about I hope you you watch this until the end or if not I hope you still did get uh, something out of it thank you very much again uh, for uh, being part of this if you have any suggestions um, which comics I should review or what kind of videos I should do, uh, this is what the comment field is about. Uh, suggest to me what you would like to see more of or less of. Um, I was thinking about doing a, a Q&A video because I'm, not, I'm still trying to answer every of your questions, um, but I'm not always managing, so I was thinking maybe just collecting some of those and put them into a Q&A so maybe you'll give me your thoughts about that um, yes and 
other than that, I hope you have a nice day and enjoy your comics. See you the next time. Bye-bye.